is Arthur. I'm a computer scientist working on uh, applied machine learning and data mining with the emphasis on applied. The uh, purpose of today's presentation I want to give is to recommend um, a computational approach uh, to representing uh, highly multi-dimensional event data um, in an efficient fashion to support uh, extensive statistical analysis and interactive visualizations of, of such data. Um, I claim that computer science can be used to, to help uh, dealing uh, with, with such data. Um, so how can we benefit from, from representing data efficiently in this kind of environment? Well, um, it can support uh, analytics in various ways. It can um, help us deal with more things in the same time. It can also speed up the processing. Uh, so all applications involving early detection of emerging crises or characterization of those crises or, or tracking them would benefit. Also, uh, we can achieve interactive navigation capability that will give the users a much more intimate contact with their data than they had ever before. So that would lead for, uh, to highly responsive visualizations. Um, so uh, just to focus on one example of, uh, of a crisis data, this particular example is just a fragment of public health. Uh, data, each record of the table corresponds to a case of disease and possibly very many columns uh, uh, represent uh, demographics, uh, symptoms, uh, diagnosis and test results and such for each of these patients. Um, what we often want to do with this data is to uh, find interesting clusters in it, find interesting projections of this data that indicate some abnormal behavior of a, of a local population. Um, so what we really want to do is to count co-occurrences of certain uh, types of records in this data. And uh, one plausible idea to make this happen really fast is to just re uh, replace the, uh, the raw data with sufficient statistics describing it. So one thing, one thing we can do is to build a contingency table for, for the co-occurrences. And that means to pre-compute the key statistics about the whole data uh, ahead of the future use in modeling and analysis. Uh, so in a hypothetical example in which we would like to estimate the conditional probability of being fly fisher if you are Canadian, we just need to retrieve the counts of uh, Canadian fly fishers in our data and divide that number by the count of Canadians in the data. Uh, so it is much more convenient to pre-compute those counts, the component counts right here, and put them in this data cube called contingency table uh, for a fast retrieval in the future whenever we need them, instead of having to see through the original data over here each time we are asked this kind of questions. Um, the complaint about this approach is uh, that these tables, these cubes, can reach enormous sizes and consume tons of memory if our data is truly highly dimensional and if each dimension is really complex and may assume many different values. So uh, a better alternative is to represent our counts in a tree form. Uh, so what this diagram shows is a very simple AD tree um, that represents the same counts of occurrences. Uh, branches of this tree correspond to um, increasingly complex queries against the data and the nodes store counts corresponding to them. Um, AD3 is really smart because it can take advantage of sparseness and red redundancies in data. And basically, we can afford cutting off huge portions of it for enormous memory savings um, without losing the ability to very quickly retrieve all the previously represented counts. Uh, we extended this technology to represent uh, data, multivariate data of um, uh, time series of events. That is very typical for many crisis mapping scenarios I, I heard about today. Um, uh, that, led, that led to development of, uh, of a new data structure that we call T-Cube, and it actually evaluates very favorably against commercial alternatives. In fact, we observe one to three orders of magnitude speed-ups in uh, time necessary uh, to retrieve uh, answers to complex time series queries. That, of course, helps us tackle real-world problems in a new ways. It can be used to rapidly and reliably detect emerging threats in public health data, for instance. We can afford running very comprehensive, uh, entirely massive screenings for all possible hypotheses of interest, screening through all possible uh, cells in these contingency tables in a reasonable time, because the data is so easy to get. Um, 
more, uh, the very recent application of this approach uh, is a part of uh, pilot real-time biosurveillance pro program that we are just um, uh, putting to life in Sri Lanka and Tamil Nadu. Uh, the analysts who, uh, who tried the T-Cube web interface that we developed kind of very lousy, uh, not very good looking interface that you can see a snapshot here, uh, that they are using to evaluate the technology. Uh, very quickly, only a few seconds after loading the data, they identify um, uh, an outbreak of uh, leptospiriosis in, in a part of the country. Um, we are using the same technology to support food safety investigation, and in this case you see an overlaid uh, diagram, um, both geospatially and temporally, showing um, a human cases of, uh, distribution of human cases of uh, salmonellosis in, in the United States, and also the results of microbial testing of food samples performed by the USDA at the uh, factories of food. Um, this data can be uh, very interactively manipulated by the users, uh, for, for getting insights by eyeballing the data, but also they can execute algorithms for automated uh, detection of possible correlations between the human cases and uh, uh, correlated events in, in food safety uh, domain. Apparently, crisis mapping does not have to be always geospatial. Um, we can also detect crises using similar technology and similar data representational tricks. Um, to discover, to discover interesting patterns in um, infrastructure data, which can be expressed with very many dimensions. Um, of course, you can replace this beautiful jet fighter with a toaster or a coffee maker, or maybe a, a part of a, um, irrigation infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, the idea here is to be able to, as quickly as possible, in identify new patterns of failure of these devices in order to be able to mitigate infrastructure crisis. Um, another piece of good, good news I have here is that uh, there are many other data structures which can dramatically speed up otherwise slow processes uh, involving statistical analysis of crisis data or user interactions that deal with uh, real, real value data, the numerical data, for instance. Um, so that's basically it. Um, I only want to conclude by saying that uh, if your crisis uh, is due to the large amounts of data, and uh, if you need your results of analysis to, to be available quickly, um, please remember that uh, friendly people uh, from the Carnegie Mellon Autumn Lab stand by and are ready to help. Um, so don't despair. Thank you very much.